to a new session of Pilot Bootcamp. This is 16th July 2023. This is our class that will take you from idea to finished draft of a brand new pilot script in just six weeks of writing. So we mentioned the stage channel um, that we're in right now, so you'll have to click that hand raise button if you would like to request to speak. And if you're watching on one of our other sites like YouTube, Twitch, you should come join us on Discord. You can find the link at scriptcamp.net, which is our website. And if you join these classes, then you can interact, speak live. Um, we have many other servers in our skill camp community. Script camp is only one of them. It's our biggest server with almost 4,000 members, but we also have servers for things like novel writing, word camp, which also has classes in uh, both prose, short story, novels, um, novelettes, and other forms of writing like that. Code camp for coding, film camp for filmmaking, tune camp for animation. We've had lots of other classes and events on these different servers, so come check them out. Um, if you get a membership with us, you get access to absolutely everything on every server. So it's not just a script camp subscription. It comes with everything else as well. So you should check out our website, which is scriptcamp.net. You can find either the classes to get on their own at scriptcamp.net slash classes, or you can sign up for that membership. That new unlimited membership price is just $19 a month if you buy yearly. If you haven't yet enrolled, but you plan to enroll, you can let us know in the chat, and we can give you instant access to all of our different member-exclusive chat channels. Okay, um, what else? So we have some upcoming classes that we will take a look at. So later today at 5 p.m. Pacific, all these times are in Pacific time, we do have a brand new class on adaptation. So we're going to be using some examples in adapting things like fairy tales and older myths. Um, but this will just be about adaptation in general and kind of give you tips for adapting stories that have already been written into new forms. Um, so that's going to be, yes, today, five hours after this class is done. Um, we have another brand new class that's going to be in August called Writing for Younger Audiences that'll have a guest that we have not yet uh, announced yet, but that will be coming next month, as will a new session of the Novel Boot Camp, which lasts 90 days. You'll write a whole book in 90 days. This is all included with the unlimited subscription. On the 21st at 6 o'clock, we have week one of feature writing. So we've already done week zero of feature writing. So this will be the first uh, class, official class in that series, and it's the last free one. So if you want to check out feature writing, come by Friday 6 to 8. And this is going to be in that same time slot, Fridays 6 to 8, for eight weeks as we work through that whole feature. This current class that you're in, the TV Pilot Bootcamp, will be... Sundays, 10 to noon, Pacific time, with the week one next week, Friday, or sorry, Sunday the 23rd. And then um, next Sunday as well, on the 23rd, we also have a writing with partners special event, so you can come learn about tips and tricks for writing with other people. Okay, so here's just a summary of all those new dates. Pilot boot camp, Sundays, 10 to noon. Novel Boot Camp starts in August, Feature Boot Camp, Friday 6 to 8. With membership, you also get access to Video Library, which has recordings of every class we do, not just the free ones. $100 off consultations and proofreads. You get script coins every month, which you can use on things like table readings or merchandise. Access to the Writer's Lab on Saturdays, which is like office hours you can come to with questions you can ask or up to five pages of work you want to get feedback on, advanced lab, um, member exclusive classes, over a hundred hours of classes every month. So this is the overview of the entire pilot class or course. So we will start on week zero today where we're going to just go into some of the basics of how does pilot writing work and what should we be working on and what kind of ideas should you be choosing with the intention that by the end of next class, so next Sunday, then you will have your log line finished. Both the series and the pilot log lines should be finalized as much as you can by the end of next class. So you'll have this whole week to work on it. And by being here in the week zero, you get a little head start, a little extra time at the beginning to maybe get nudged in the right direction if you're not quite sure about a few things. So we'll go over some basics of things like format genre today and how to pick an idea. And then you will have the opportunity to share your early versions of your ideas if you want to get that first kind of round of feedback as you move towards completing the logline this week. You're also going to start filling out sketchbook this week, which the sketchbook just being a kind of 
unsorted collage of all your influences, inspirations, research materials, and just all of your notes in relation to this one show. Week one is going to be story engines, and we're going to finish up with log lines. So you're going to finalize those log lines and keep filling out the sketchbook. The sketchbook is never really finished being filled out. You always will have it open. We'll always be working on it, and we'll make it today in class if you've not already made one for your current project. Week two is outlining, so that's where we're going to go deep into structure. Your goal for that week is going to be to complete your story beat summary, which is just a list of most of the major scenes in the order that they're supposed to occur in, so you'll have a good sense of how the acts are interacting and what we're leading up to, how we start, how the story proceeds, and how it ends. Last, you are going to, in the outlining phase, finish up with the scene cards, August 13th. You're going to complete a full paragraph for every scene, as well as a page estimate of where you think that's going to be to try to uh, set your pacing early on and figure out where all your benchmarks are and where your act breaks are supposed to be. After that, we're moving into Act 1, and every week from the halfway mark of class forward is going to be a whole act every week. So you're sort of incentivized to be picking the shorter idea if you're trying to decide between full hour or half hour show. If you're writing half hour, you have half as many pages to do in a very condensed time. So if you're not sure, probably pick the shorter idea. You're going to write 10 pages a week if you're doing half hour, 20 pages a week if you're doing full hour. Starting on week four on August 20th, you'll write the first act, either pages 1 to 10 or page 1 to 20. Week five is either going to be 10 to 20 or, what is it, 20 to 40. And then third act, September 3rd, you're going to finish that first draft by the end of that week with your final 10 or 20 pages of the script. All right, so that whole thing is done by September 10th if you follow the milestones of the program. We have the question in the chat, are we going to be working on series logline or the pilot logline? You're going to be working on both simultaneously. We have a question also in the chat, how do you write a book in 90 days? Well, careful outlining in the first half and then uh, very disciplined execution in the second half is how I would summarize how we write not only the, the novel, but anything like this, any very ambitious writing project in a condensed time frame, we want to try to figure out what happens on every page before you actually start writing the pages. At least that's my approach. We have a question from the chat. Would this also apply to miniseries or anthology series? So miniseries, yes, because miniseries have the same sort of idea as to how their pilot works um, in that it is going to be the first episode that sets up the future episodes. But an anthology is different. An anthology, I would take the feature screenwriting class if you want to learn how to do, because an anthology... Entry is just a short movie that is not connected to any of the other entries in this in that same show So all of the principles of feature writing will apply more to an anthology show But miniseries and limited series also have pilots so that would still cross over and apply So um, let's have anyone who wants to weigh in you can introduce yourself tell us maybe what are you trying to write? What is your favorite show? Um, what is your intention or your um, the, your goals for the class, your experience levels, or maybe what you're intending to write next or what you want to learn more about? Anyone can feel free to weigh in in the text, or you can raise a hand. I'll call on you, and you can tell us about yourself. We'll start with Lalo. Hello, guys. Good afternoon here, but I'm going to introduce Hey, Lalo, how's everything going? Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Well, I was trying to write and understand, so I am discovering this world, and I'm trying to uh, to figure out uh, which sector of writing uh, would like more. I'm, I'm also in the feature camp, and I'm on this, trying to to see what, what, I, what I like. I love shows like Better Call Saul, Barry, and especially Breaking Bad. And anthology series. I well, I'm a new, I'm a guy, and my goal to I think we lost your mic there, Lalo. Um, if you want to try again, then feel free. Well, uh, whatever he does. Uh, well, like hearing because my mic, my mic. 
Yeah, we're having a bit of interference. I, we heard most of your introduction. We heard about the shows that you like, Better Call Saul and Barry and Breaking Bad. So it sounds like you're into sort of crime and dark comedy kind of shows, which is great. Um, you can try again with the mic, or if you want to tell us maybe uh, what your, your uh, goal yeah, is. Too. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I think we may have a lot of uh, no, no, inter- no. interruption um, here. So Go ahead. So I discovered that. Level is null, is zero, so I'm trying to discover, no, I like more this type of the uh, to figure out, figure out that. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Glad to have you. Hope that you can find the type uh, of writing you. that you connect with the most and the thing that you want to do. What? Uh, I, I have the difference to... Okay, I'm not quite sure if Lalo is able to under- hear or understand us okay there, but um, we're glad to have you. I hope you can hear hear me at this point. Um, it seems like you're trying to figure out what kind of writing you want to be uh, doing, what kind, what thing you're, you're most interested in working on. So yeah, it's great to just try out the different classes, try out TV, try out features, try out novels and short stories and these other things. Thank you for weighing in. Let's uh, hear from Meep. Uh, hello. Uh, um, I guess if I, uh, I, I'm, I guess I, I'm, I'm pretty sure some people in here know who I am, but not everybody does. Uh, if I had to say what, like, my favorite shows are, uh, well, I always kind of grew up watching a lot of anime, and I also liked a lot of, uh, comic book inspired, like, media as well. I just recently finished watching, um, Invincible, and I thought that was a really, really cool show. Um, I'm also very partial to things like Dragon Ball Z and My Hero Academia. Um, my experience level, uh, I don't know where I'd put myself. I know I'm an amateur. I used to write scripts a long time ago when I was, like, I guess younger, but now I'm, like, back in school and I'm trying to, like, actually learn to apply my craft a little bit more. And I guess my goal is to just find a way to be able to um, just l- learn how to improve the writing that I do here and hopefully uh, be able to land some sort of a job. Great. Not not soon, certainly, given the writer strike that is uh, currently yeah, ongoing. Oh, yeah, with yeah, definitely. <laughs> no sign of stopping. Um, and anyone who didn't see yesterday, we did a QA with um, WJ writer Max Perry, which you should check out if you have any questions on the strike, because we pretty much covered the entire thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, great. You gotta just, yeah, the, the, ba- the way to get those jobs once the strike is over is to be fantastic at doing this. And that takes a lot of work and study and dedication. And it seems like you're in the right place. Yep. 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 Good to be here. Thanks, Meep. All right. So Lala has clarified his favorite shows, Attack on Titan, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, Barry, and Fleabag. He's written a few short films and his goals are discover if I'm more of a feature or a TV writer. Great, that's a fantastic goal to have. Thank you for that. Anyone else want to raise a hand and speak up or let us know in text what your goals are, intentions, what you want to study, what you want to write, favorite shows? Vincent Price's Inferior Twin tells us his favorite shows are Tales from the Crypt. Hell yeah, that's one of my favorites too. What We Do in the Shadows, The Boys, Blood Drive, all of these served as direct inspiration for what I want to make here. I've written short scripts, but still an amateur. Goals are to make a good pilot episode and understand what shortcomings I have as a writer. Okay, great. So yeah, good to figure out what you're good at and what, where you can improve, areas for improvement. Uh, okay, so I'm going to advance to our next slides, but feel free, if you have not yet spoken up, you can let us know anything about your goals or questions you have or intentions that you have for the course in the chat. So let's look at what we're going to be doing for six weeks. How uh, how do we write a pilot in six weeks? Well, first of all, you stop worrying really if it's going to be that good or not. And this is kind of just like a lesson that you should carry forward from this. If you if nothing else, it's that if you get stuck in this swamp of perfectionism and everything, then you're just never going to finish. And the ways that you improve as a writer are by one reading, two writing, and three moving on. And by moving on, I mean not only finishing things and moving on, but occasionally realizing when you've done all you can on something and moving on. Ideally, you'll be finishing things and moving on, but that's not always the case. And so by simply working on these skills, and it doesn't sound like moving on is a skill, but it actually is. 
um, reading, number one, you have to be consistent and you have to actually be doing this and not skipping this part because a lot of people think they can sort of maybe skim things or skip this part. And then they make a bunch of very common mistakes in their scripts that I can tell instantly right away who doesn't read uh, enough scripts by just looking at a few pages of anyone's script. Um, we have writing, so you should be writing pilots, but you can write other stuff too. You can be writing plays, books, movies, whatever it is. And then last we have moving on. So once you've finished something, and then you have to reach a point where you stop tweaking it and you move on to the next thing. You can't just obsess over one thing for years. And if anything is causing you to spend more than four to six months on a script, you should usually adjust your process and realize that something's off and you may need to completely change how you approach this. So you should easily be able to write at least, in, ter in terms of TV, three scripts a year. Um, and that's just kind of minimum. Uh, if you're doing, if you're following this programs like this, where you just sort of chain them together one after the next, you could easily write more like five script, five, six TV scripts per year, especially if you're only writing half hour, which are only 30 pages, you can easily whip those out in about a month and a half, two months. Um, maybe try to aim, aim for a specific goal, set a benchmark for yourself, say, I want to write four scripts by the end of the year and try your best to stick to that, whether or not they turn out well or perfect. These are not these kind of precious artifacts that cannot possibly be broken or, or, or done injustice to. You have to look at this more like you're going to the gym and you need to just run the laps. Uh, you're not trying to write something that will become a famous show or get you lots of money or get you famous or anything like this. Looking to improve these fundamental skills and, and approach this more like weightlifters who have to put the time in in order to one day be competitive at the high levels. Okay, so let's make sketchbooks now. Um, so open Google Docs, make a new document. You're gonna call it name of show sketchbook. If you don't have a name of the show yet, then just call it pilot sketchbook. And at the top of this document, you're going to add these entries here. So we have title, genre, format slash time slots, comps, and log lines, both series and pilot. So if you really, really want to use something other than Google Docs, you can, but I just recommend it because it's easy. It comes with a Google account, which you are, most people already have, and it can be shared and collaborated on very easily in the class setting. If you're sharing documents in these courses, you should either be using a Google Drive link or a PDF, but don't share other formats um, just because it will get too difficult to have people able to open them. If you're linking docx files and things like this, the format will just get totally messed up. So always link either Google Docs or PDF. So go ahead and make this now. If you've not already, make sure to fill these things out. Title, genre, format and time slot, comps, and log lines. And then we will go into more of what these mean in a moment. And if you don't have any of these, then you don't have to fill it out, but just fill out whatever you do know, whatever you do have. Okay, so here's some ground rules. Don't do true stories, anthologies, or adaptations. If you want to learn how to do adaptations, I would come to the class today at five. If you want to learn about anthologies, come to a feature class. And true stories, we have not done a class on, and we probably won't, but maybe someday. In any case, these are all things that just require a lot more research. And in writing a script in six weeks, you don't want to burden yourself with any extra work that you don't have to do because you'll be kind of... Um, spending a lot of time on those things and it's easy to get lost and fall behind because you added extra work for yourself in this very condensed writing time. So by that same token, you probably don't want to write a historical unless you already have a good amount of experience or have done a research or maybe you only watch Pride and Prejudice type Jane Austen shows. So you're like, I don't even need to do the research. I just know the society and culture so well. Maybe something like that, but I just will caution you against writing a historical. I also caution you against writing sort of difficult to manage conceits on the page, like things that involve multiple copies of the same people, body switching, so freak, Freaky Fridays, Groundhog Days, clones, parallel universes, or scripts that have complicated montage or flashback structures, uh, unless your show is you know really revolving around these different flashback structures, uh, which is just very difficult to manage. Um, be careful with any of those uh, because it's very tough to keep that stuff straight and you just don't want the majority of notes that you get to be on, wait, what is happening? You don't want the majority of notes you get to be on just trying to figure out what you intended to be going on because that's just going to distract from all the notes that you could have gotten on things like character, pacing, theme, and, and these things that we want people to be mostly 
paying attention to. But in any case, this is a good time to just take a big swing and write something kind of weird and funny that just keeps you excited and interested in coming back uh, for six weeks' time and, and will allow you to put it to bed at the end and say, this is finished. I can now satisfactorily move on from that project, having done my very best. Even if it's not a masterpiece, I took a swing at it and I ended up with something that's finished, even if you know it, it wasn't everything I'd hoped. Um, okay, so we have a uh, question. What are the time slots? Oh, the time slots are half hour or full hour. Yep. Um, for there's occasionally there's other formats for speculative pilot stuff. Like if you're trying to specifically write an adult swim type, like 15 minute cartoon, maybe. Um, I don't really know too much about that. And then if you're writing for if you want to write for late night or things like that, then you are going to write a packet of sketches which is different than what we're doing here. So we're specifically looking at either half hour or full hour specifically, which in a TV writer portfolio, that's generally what you're gonna wanna have. Okay, um, so try something just weird and funny. Think of a mashup of stuff that you just have always wanted to see but would never get made. If you're like, I love the West Wing, but I also love Friday the 13th, maybe you're like, what if we did a slasher political show somehow? I don't know. Maybe the president is a serial killer. That'd be kind of cool. Um, and just try that out and just, you know, give it your all. Try your best, but you, it's another, the kind of thing that you won't be devastated if you didn't get just right or if you didn't do justice to because you didn't properly tell the story of the people involved. You should just pick something that will keep you excited for six weeks. Also, just get used to sharing work with early, um, your other students and with me at the early stages. It can be kind of difficult to hear notes at these early stages, but you should just get used to the idea that er less developed ideas will get more notes, and more developed ideas will get less notes, usually. You want to use your real name if you're going to be persisting past the free intro classes in this session, so you're going to want to change your username to your real name, or if you really don't want to use your real name, then a nickname or a middle name or something. You don't have to do this now, but if you're going to be in classes after these free and public intros, then you should do that. Um, you can also, if you really want to rewrite something for this class, you should be ready to tear it apart completely and start essentially from scratch. Um, but I would not use this class as, an, uh, as a basis for getting notes on something and then rewriting it in accordance with those notes. You should have already gotten notes if you're trying to do a rewrite, and you should be ready to start from square one. Okay, some basics of TV writing. Let me just check for questions in the chat really quick. Can we use a pen name? Uh, yeah, you can use a pen name as long as it's a real name. Um, people don't do this in the, uh, in, in like, it, I guess it, it's not as common as with authors for screenwriters to use pen names, but it does happen, and sometimes they just end up changing their name uh, to a sort of something easier to remember that almost is kind of like their entertainment name in general. Like John August, for instance, like his real last name was something uh, German and difficult to pronounce. When he moved to LA to be a screenwriter, just started going by John August, but he doesn't use that as like a pen name as much as it is like overall and just a name that he uses for his entertainment self. Um, I hope that makes sense. So, But yeah, you, you can use a, a different name than your own if you really want to. Just keep in mind, if you want to work in the industry, it's like very much based on who you are and people getting to know you. And uh, they, especially in TV, want people that they're going to be comfortable spending 12 hours a day in rooms with on their staffs. And it's like, if we have to call our fellow staff members by their pen names, it just might create a weird barrier. So just be aware of how that comes off a little bit, but it's not that big a deal. Okay, um, what else? So how do shows work? Well, they're written by staffs in the US um, for the most part. There's exceptions to this, but staffs usually consist of a hierarchy of writers that are staff writers at the lowest level, and they're overseen by a hierarchy of writing producers because in TV shows, producers are writers, um, or the higher level writers are producers, all of whom are overseen by the showrunner, who's the head of both writing and production and the heart of the entire show. They are the voice of the show. They're the boss of the entire thing. The number of staff writers can be anywhere from just two or three on limited series and maybe even one writer on very kind of singular voice shows with all the way up to 10 or more writers on big comedies, late night sketch shows and things like this. 
comedy rooms are bigger than drama rooms and show orders for comedies usually are longer than orders for a drama. So it's like 22 episode seasons for sitcoms used to be the norm. That has changed a bit over time, but uh, for the most part, comedy will have more episodes, but be shorter per episode. So spec actually refers to several different things concurrently. In features, the word spec means a script that you've written on your own that was not commissioned by anyone. In TV, a spec episode is a fan fiction episode of an existing show, whereas a spec pilot is usually just called a pilot nowadays. I know this is confusing and seems to be sort of contradictory or whatever, but what we're writing are pilots or spec pilots, which are original first episodes of TV shows, theoretical shows that don't exist and will probably never exist, that you're going to use as a writing sample to try to get meetings and reads and to enter contests and win fellowships and things like this, as you attempt to get a manager who can then attempt to get you staffing meetings, who can then if you nail the staffing meetings, you might be able to get staffed on a show. So um, the goal is not to write a pilot that you're going to be the boss of right out of the gate. If you consider that a TV show is a b business, and a, so a script, a pilot, is a proposition to create a business that will employ more than 100 people and move dozens of millions of dollars around for many years to come. They don't give these to brand new writers. Uh, you are going to have to try to get a manager, get staffed on another show, and work your way up. TV is very hierarchy based and very based on things like paying your dues. And so, if you want to work on staffs, uh, or if you're if you want to have your own show, chances are you will have to work on staffs for a while, unless you have some brilliant book that comes out and is a huge hit, or you have a huge web series that's a huge hit, or if you have success in some other arena, you might be able to leverage that into getting showrunner on your very first show. It's really rare to do that. We have a question in the chat. Meep asks, what is a writing producer? Well, on t in TV, when you see all the producers in the credits on a TV show, those are writers. So writers are just credited as producers on a show, and they have more control over the final product than on a movie, for instance, where the writer does not have that much control on the final product. It's like, uh, by considering writers producers and by allowing them to act in that capacity, they have more control over the entire show and more able, ability to exert sort of um, their own perspective on the final piece. So it just gives them a little more power in TV to, to have writers be producers. Um, what else? So we have, um, yeah, so that's the difference between specs, TV uh, spec episodes and spec pilots. Um, how to get staffed? Well, one way is by working up through the assistant track, which means you have to be in LA and you're going to have to spend years being an assistant, getting coffee, cleaning, and like doing assistant things before you perhaps can be promoted to writer's PA, at which point you want to be promoted to writer's assistant, which sounds like an entry level job, but is actually a very coveted and difficult job to get. But when you move from writer's assistant, uh, to you can either move to showrunner's assistant or maybe to, to staffing from there. Um, but that's how you kind of take the long, steady route. That's the slow and steady wins the race approach. The other track is by getting really, really obscenely good at writing pilots, as well as other stuff like plays, stand-up books, web shows, features, something like this to build out your portfolio and get attention and stand out and get really good management. And then you're going to want to try to get staffing meetings. But there's no real point in getting those meetings unless you are a fantastic writer because they're going to want to read your samples. And if your samples aren't good, you're not going to get the meetings. And then once you actually get those meetings, you're going to have to do really well in those and prove that you're good in a room, you're pleasant to be around, you're going to work well with others and be good at taking things like notes and criticism and being very quick and constructive with your own notes and criticism. And you'll just have to really impress them and, and make a group of very highly paid, very highly respected producers think that they will want to spend 12 hours in a room with you for the next several months. Um, there's a lot of different skills that go into this, and this is very difficult, and there is not uh, a lot of jobs in this arena. So you're going into this knowing that you you have a better chance of becoming a major league sports player than doing this. I hope that we at least have uh, the thick skin that's going to be required to be good in a room as well, which involves taking notes constructively and well and being easygoing and easy to work with and good at receiving feedback and riffing off of other people's ideas without shooting them down. This is a very, very, very social job and requires excellent social skills. We have a question from me. Does the showrunner do the work of a director? No, So, but the showrunner does hire the directors or gets to choose who the, or like have, has a huge say in who the directors will be. 
um, and also gets to set tone meetings with the directors where they sort of tell them how things are going to go beforehand and you get to kind of work with them. So they kind of answer to you, but you aren't the director yourself if you're the showrunner. There are some exceptions to that. We have seen, especially in the past few years, showrunners actually also direct episodes of the show. I mean, Vince Gilligan has directed episodes of Breaking Bad, a lot of them, and, you know, people like, uh, uh, what's what's her name, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, um, I think has directed a few episodes of her shows, um, but it's like, normally, it's going to be like, you, the director's answer to you, and you're kind of in charge of them. Okay, so um, let's look at, I think we can, I'll just briefly touch on this, this idea that you're making a very long brick road, so you can't worry too much whether any individual brick is perfect or not. You kind of have to just uh, get to work and um, put the next one down. So don't get don't get stuck in perfectionism. Don't get stuck on any scripts. You want to be writing uh, at least a script every couple months, if you can, and try to keep that up and keep the momentum high. And keep studying and keep reading, and this takes a significant investment of your life's time, but you are doing this because that's what you've chosen to do, and that's what you're excited about. So here's the overview of the, every step. We use these steps for everything from pilots to features to novels, and we start with, one, the logline. Logline being the one-sentence expression of what is this about? And in TV, we have two separate loglines, one being the series logline, which tells us what we're doing in the whole show, and then the pilot logline, which tells us what is just happening in this very first episode, usually framed around your central protagonist and telling us what kicks the story off, what do they encounter, what are they up against, and what is the time limit or time frame or other other boundaries or walls to the story. We then move to sketchbook, which is the kind of collage of all of your research, notes, influences, inspirations, and just ideas. You're going to collect those all in one place, which you should already have made the sketchbook and you should be filling it out always and always have it open during class and be writing filling things out as much as you can writing down questions that you have working out problems and just instead of you know playing your game boy during class i'd recommend uh having the sketchbook open and be working on that the whole time story beats is next in story beats we've been over briefly but that's the full list of or not not exactly full but the mostly complete list of scenes in the general order they're supposed to happen you don't have to have every single scene in there but uh you should generally know what is the structure of my episode by the end of that document? And then you expand that document into scene cards, which is a full paragraph for every single scene with really clearly laid out goals, stakes, ob intentions, objectives, and tactics that your characters are using. And then last, when you have all of that done, our step five is we say you go to pages, which means you move from outlining to actually using screenwriting software to stage scenes and write dialogue and actually write the the whole thing given using your outline and you're going to mark your progress as you go and keep track of where you are in the script and you're going to try to execute on what you have outlined um if you come up with different ideas you can change it as you go but try not to um your goal is to try to stick with what you have outlined especially if you want to work in tv it's a very collaborative medium where if somebody gives you an outline you have to you are supposed to write what is in there um and if you come up with different ideas it's not that they can never work but if you turn on something completely different from what your bosses were expecting then y it might not be great so try to just get good at executing on the outlines that you come up with as best you can and um if you need to make adjustments then wait until the draft is done and then re-outline and make those changes for the next draft question from me do you have any tips for balancing working on multiple projects my recommendation is don't. Uh, I would work on just one project at a time, wait till it's done, then move on to the next one. I know it's a little, uh, it's almost impossible for some people to do, so I'll say maybe limit yourself as much as you can, but these things take a lot of investment of time and effort. I would say if you, are, if you really wanna switch between stuff, try to finish at least a solid draft of something, and then maybe before revising it, you can go to something else for a while to take your mind off the first thing. Um, and then I would, I would approach it more that way rather than saying, I'm going to spend one day on this script, then another day on the other script, then go back and forth and back and forth. That's really difficult, and very few people can manage that. So I would try to at least get a solid draft done. Or maybe you can look at it like, I got one story beat outline done, now I can move to another thing and write that story beat outline. So at least advance it to the next stage or step before you step away from it. Uh, okay, so here's the process. Any questions about just these basics before we go more into things like logline?
All right, if there's no questions, let's move right along into Logline. So right now I'd suggest in your sketchbook, if you have not already written out an early version of your Logline, I would start doing so as we're going over just how they work and what they look like. And uh, in in an effort to just make the, the sharing process a little smoother, I would just get ready to copy and paste that into the chat if you wanna share your early version of your idea for feedback today. So I would just be working that out, typing that, and when you're ready, just highlight it and press Control C to copy, or you can right click and press copy. And then you can paste it into the Discord chat window if you wanna get feedback on that in about 20 minutes. So um, let's get into log lines, and I'll just show you guys a few. Um, let me just show you some series log lines so you can have a sense of what these look like before I start to go into more detail. But a log line, it tells us who is this about, what are they doing, what are they up against, and kind of gives us a sense of how is this a show, or what is the general time frame of this, or how many years of TV is this going to be. And the answer might be unlimited in some series. It's kind of just a, situ a, a setup that can be repeated, or it can be um, spun out into many, many different episodes, many situations, and there's sort of no limit. We have right here, a st and you can also see that these are the different continuity formats that we're using. So we have either status quo or premise-based shows. A status quo show means a show where everything sort of resets to zero at the end of every episode. Things like Your Family Guy, Law & Order, The Simpsons, most cartoons, most sitcoms, most procedurals. You can turn on any episode and you can essentially understand what's going on and there's no need to have watched more story material to get it. That is a status quo-based continuity format. So let's look at one of these here now. So Blackish, this is a show that is off the air now, I believe, but this ran for many years. Status quo comedy, 30 minutes. So a black family man struggles to gain a sense of cultural identity while raising kids in a predominantly white upper middle class neighborhood. So you see there's not actually a specific and tangible objective in this series logline, but that's okay because it's more a type of situation that the character will be in. But notice it is still phrased very actively and specifically. Struggles to gain a sense of cultural identity tells us like the broad genre of conflicts that we're going to be running into in the show. And we don't want to frame it as just like a guy raises his kids and does stuff in a neighborhood. We have sort of fine tuned this log line to express specifically why he's having these conflicts and like how they relate to the character's interiority. So it is actually quite a well-written logline, despite the fact that it does not have that strong goal because it tells, or not, it doesn't have that really tangible, physical, t achievable goal because it tells me, oh, this could easily last for many years of repeatable situations or sort of episodic situations that could stem from this same setup. Um, so this is a really good model for what a, st a good status quo show logline looks like. Don't phrase it as just they do stuff or I don't know, they live their lives, they grow up. You're going to want to be a little more specific than that. And then we have a couple premise-based loglines as well. So premise shows are ones that uh, we start on the first chapter, and it's like a long movie that we have to go through many chapters of that movie to understand the whole scope of the story. But the first episode still needs to have that beginning, middle, and end, and it still needs to feel satisfying on its own right because you're not going to get to write more episodes. You only get to write the pilot, and no one's going to read anything beyond that. So do not write any more episodes. You're wasting your time. You can write little summaries of maybe what you where you think the show would be going, and sometimes something like that can fit into your series document, like your Bible or things like that. We're not going to be working on show Bibles in this class, and I find that they're a waste of time unless you are fantastic at pilots already, which, if you're just starting out, you most likely will not be, and that's okay. No one starts out good at really complicated things like this. Um, so let's look at premise pilots. Uh, a fast-talking financial advisor drags his family from Chicago to the Missouri Ozarks, where he must launder $500 million in five years to appease a drug boss. So here's our main character, described in an evocative and simple way, fast-talking financial advisor. So he's described in a way that tells us what is his primary tactic or skill set or ability that he's going to be using to solve problems. Financial advisor tells us the sort of world that we're in, the type of crime that he's committing. He drags his family from Chicago to Missouri Ozarks, so that tells us that what, what world he started in and what world he has gone into. Well, he has to launder five hundred million dollars in five years. That tells us the type of conflict, the type of uh, the objective that our main character has, but also the scope of the show. It basically says this is going to be about a five-season show. 
um, and to appease a drug boss tells us sort of the types of conflicts that they're going to be running into on an episode by episode basis, which are things like the gangsters are mad that we haven't laundered enough money for them. Now they're going to attack us. Or it could be, you know, various problems and challenges that arise from our main character's dealings with this crime boss that is outside of his sort of uh, uh, world of experience. He's a financial advisor, he's out of his depth, and he's in over his head. Okay, so that's one of my favorite sort of series loglines for a premise show that gives us that really clear sense of who is this about, what is he trying to do, where is this going? Breaking Bad is this other very famous show that has the very other clear logline. A high school chemistry teacher diagnosed with inoperable lung cancer turns to manufacturing and selling meth to secure his family's future. For this one, if I were to write this, I would probably change this a little bit to say something like a meek high school chemistry teacher teams up with his former student to sell meth to secure his family's future, something like that, just because I feel that central relationship with Jesse just is so core to the story engine of Breaking Bad. But then again, it works fine without it, too. And you can totally get the sense of what the show is, the types of conflicts that are going into it, and what's motivating the main character. We really like to have that sense of motivation and urgency from the logline alone. So these are series loglines. So we want to kind of give the sense of what is this going to be for several years of entertainment? It shouldn't feel like this is something that can happen in one episode, and it shouldn't really feel like something that could resolve in one season unless it's a miniseries. We have a question in the chat. Are we allowed to post our loglines for review if we have them ready? Um, hold off on them just for a minute just so they don't get lost. I'll tell you when to, to post them. We'll post them in about 10 minutes of class. We usually use the second half of class mostly for reviewing loglines. I want to make sure to uh, go over a couple other continuity format and genre things first, though. So let me pause for questions on series loglines. Does everybody sort of understand how this is kind of working, the kind of elements that go into this, and how we want to convey the sense of what kind of entertainment we're going to be presenting with our show for years to come? Meep has a question. Go ahead. Um, I was trying to like process the breakdown of what you were saying while you were going over this. So what are, what would you say are the key th the the key points that would need to be included like not only what the show is about but it also needs to be like a specific description of the majority of what you're going to be seeing yeah ideally those are one and the same um so okay. by telling us so f f start with the main character um all you pretty much always want to start with the main character unless you have a true ensemble show with like this is us or something like that which most people are not writing something like that so don't be fooled and think you're writing an ensemble show if you're not um but an ensemble show is like many different characters with equally weighted stories and in, if that's the case you might start a little bit more pulled back and say something like the intertwined lives of five groups of friends as they struggle with this specific challenge in this specific era and time period you know what i mean so mm -hmm. you want to give that sense of what is this going to be for years? What are what kinds of conflicts are these people dealing with? What are they up against? And what is the scope of this narrative? Mm -hmm. What are they up against? And what is the scope of the narrative? Yep, exactly. Okay. Okay. So for instance, if we're doing a fantasy action show and we're saying that this is going to be about a knight that defends a kingdom, right? We might say mm -hmm. something like, when a gallant knight, I'm just giving you the most generic description possible, a, a gallant but troubled knight is recruited to the highest court of the land. He must defend the court from various monsters and threats over the years. But then your pilot logline might be, you know, on Lancelot's first day, he has to fight a troll. <laughs> so we're going from general to specific. And the general okay. one, the, it should be that sense of, oh, I understand what this would be five years down the line versus the pilot which just tells us okay the very first step in this larger goal is this and i guess just like a real quick aside do you have any tips on how to condense it down an idea if you have one that's too broad the you want to condense the log line or condense the idea itself condense the idea so that it fits within the log line oh condense an idea so it fits in the log line i think i'd have to know what the we can why don't we just talk about it now just why don't you talk about if you have a uh an issue with your idea being too big um go for it i mean i i mean like i, I like like that was what i was asking if it was okay to post the log lines because i kind of already have mine set i just wanted i guess know if it sort of fits the parameters of how it's supposed to go but if we're not doing that right now then that's i fine. see yeah G give me like 10 minutes and then we'll come back to you and sure. I'll, be I'll be glad to uh give feedback on yours thanks mate Okay, um, so any other questions on series logline? I'm going to go into pilot logline for a minute, then we're going to go into genre, and then we will share um, loglines for feedback.
Okay, if there's no other questions, let's go into pilot. Oh, I do have a slide for that, don't I? Maybe not. Um, Nacho, is there a macro for pilot log lines? Um, yeah, like if you go to the log line, there it's in, should be in two. Let's see. Uh, so if you go to slide 28, sorry, 27 and 28, or slide, uh, slide 53 and 54, those are both the series and pilot log lines templates. I think... We may have doubled up on series long line slides by accident, but that's okay. I think we have a macro for it in the So chat. if you just get at the end, so slide number 53, mm -hmm. and then, so that's series and then pilot. Is the but, but there's no examples of pilot log lines? Oh, yeah. No, we don't have anything like that. Oh, we, we don't. Have, okay, good to know. Collected in. That's um, okay. That, I don't know if they, note, note to self. There, should, Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just wondering. I mean, I, I mean, I guess you can kind of look at some of the ones... On Netflix, I guess would be some. We might have to write them examples, ourselves, I guess. Right? Yeah, we, we we might just have to yeah. come, come up with them for a few shows because they usually don't share stuff like this. Um, I was yeah, I wasn't sure if we had a slide for it or a macro that had it. Okay, um, that's all right. So yeah, pilot logline tells us what is happening just in this first episode, and it looks a little bit more like a movie logline. So it's going to start with the inciting incident. So think of what is the event that kicks off the action just in this first story on this first chapter of this larger story. And sometimes if you're doing a status quo show, it can have an inciting incident. Like think of something like the IT crowd where we have um, a new boss joins the IT department. But after that, we sort of settle into a status quo routine. Um, shows by that creator are often kind of work in that format. Like Black Books works in a similar way where we have a sort of uh, a status quo setup and then a new character kind of joins that situation. And then that sets our template for whatever is to come. And we have a lot of other shows in the sort of um, uh, status quo format, which just drop us in the middle of whatever's going on. They don't really have a, one specific event that kicks off the entire series. And it's more just like this is one short movie amongst many other short movies that could exist in this world. So Inciting Incident is that first event that occurs, that kicks, that first domino that falls, that is going to... Uh, cause the conflict of that episode. An adjective protagonist, you're telling us who is the sort of main character, and we want to describe them in a way that is relevant uh, given their involvement in whatever's going on. So you want to use that adjective carefully and not just throw it away. Don't just pick an adjective that we would expect or that seems generic or down the middle. We don't want to see a determined detective takes a case to stop a serial killer. It's like, yeah, we expect a detective to be determined. And you don't want to say something like a protective parent because it's like we expect a parent to be protective. So you have to pick something that is going to highlight what is unique about your main character, what makes their journey particularly difficult, ironic, or noteworthy. Um, so choose that adjective carefully. And then they must conflict, so that's telling us what happens in Act 2 of the show, what is the tactic that they're going to use to attempt to overcome the problem posed by the inciting incident, and then we have stakes, which is telling us what happens if they fail, or what is the time pressure, the ticking clock that is going to be uh, adding urgency to their journey. So by the end of this, we want a sense of who is this about? What are they trying to do? What kicks the story off? Uh, what are they up against? And what happens if they fail? So you don't always have to use this exact format. If you can answer most of those questions, then uh, you're fine. But just be aware that those are kind of the questions that we will have. So if your pilot logline ends up not answering or even implying the answer to some of those, then you may have uh, to rephrase it a little bit. So I'll stop for questions on this, then we'll get into genre, then we'll share loglines. Any questions on pilot logline? Another question for me, go ahead. Um, okay, so you said if, we, so the question, so you said if we can answer the question, is the question like, so basically what you have here when inciting incident, an editor protagonist must conflict before stakes. When you say answer the question, well, what specifically do you mean? The questions are, who is this about? 
um, what is what event kicks the story off? What conflict are they engaged in or what opposing force are they up against? And last, what happens if they fail, which is sort of the question of stakes. So each of these things that are in the parentheses here are sort of the answer to one of those things. So I'm actually writing those questions down. So you said, what is the, con who, um, who is this about? Sure. What conflict are they up against? Mm -hmm. I'll write it in the um, chat if you what... want, if, if that would be helpful for you. Oh, what was that? I can write it in the chat if you, if that would be helpful. Yes, I would appreciate that. Sure. Okay. So I'll start with who is this about? What kicks off this story? Mm -hmm. What is hero slash cast up against? And what are the consequences if they fail? Mm hmm. Okay. Because that okay? Because I was I was looking at that and I was just like, okay, this is the template for how you're supposed to write it. But what are the questions that you're trying to answer? Yeah. Because I know that there are other ways you can write it, and I'm just like, sometimes I feel like if I have to try and conform to that bubble, or if someone has to try and conform to that bubble, if you don't, it could potentially like make things a little haywire. So I was just like, what are what are the questions? So I know exactly what I'm trying to write the answer to. Sure. Um, why don't I just spell it out here really quickly? Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just gonna. Oh, there they are. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thanks for the question. So, start with the template if you don't know where else to begin when inciting incident, an adjective protagonist must conflict before stakes. And there's nothing wrong with that, and a lot of great log lines use that template. Totally fine. If you find that you can sort of imply the stakes or imply the timeline or something like that, then that's also okay. We have a question. Is it okay if we fill this up to get help with log on? Yeah, you can. You mean fill that out like just sort of a checklist? Sure, if you want to. I would try to fill it out and then phrase the results as one coherent sentence, though. That would be sort of maybe just like a cheat sheet to you to write a log line. But if you can't figure out how to make it one sentence, then you can just turn in whatever you have. OK, so while you guys are on that, let's, um, oh, we have a question above. Um, is it OK if the long line's a bit long to make it clear, or is it OK if it's short but somewhat broad in general? So for the series log line, you should err on the side of shorter but broad in general. And in the pilot log line, you can err on the side of a little longer but more specific. Okay, let's get into genre. And if you have questions, of course, feel free to keep typing them. I just want to move to uh, this slide on genre <clears throat> so we can move through this sequence and be ready to share student log lines in a moment. Okay, um, so genre, here we go. So you should be clear on what genre you want to do or that you are doing. Um, if we, a lot of the time, if somebody's answer is, I don't know what genre it is, it just kind of makes it feel like they don't know what they're writing or working on or what the appeal is of what they're doing. And it feels like you need to watch more shows. Um, pretty much every single show fits into some sort of genre, even if it's a niche or if it's kind of an unusual one. And we can boil this down to one or two words at the most, or one or two genres. So we don't want to mix together five or six things, even if you really feel that your show is all of those things, because it just won't sound very coherent or cohesive. Um, it's just going to sound like it's just a mess of nothing if it's too many things all mashed into one. So you want to just pick two of these at the most. The options are essentially comedy, drama, crime, sci-fi, fantasy, action-adventure, mystery thriller or horror horror being one of the newer kind of additions to the tv genre world um i mean i think horror shows were not really a thing before the 90s 
Um, and uh, with, you know, the occasional exceptions, but regardless, these are kind of the elemental genres that you're going to pick from for the most part. We have procedural, which is going to be a sort of format of show that is usually going to be police, medical, legal, or some other institution or job. And those are going to be status quo shows almost always. And then we have animated, which again is more of, uh, it's not a genre as much as it, is, as it is just kind of like a mode that we're in. It's usually half an hour and usually comedy or action adventure, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. And we see, have seen enough exceptions nowadays that it doesn't really matter. But you don't really really write these shows that differently. Um, you should kind of maybe just be able to answer the question, why is this a cartoon, though? Um, or why is this animated? And have something to an say to, as an answer to that more than just, I like it or I want it to be. Um, there's, there's not actually any kind of rigorous review or th you don't actually have to, like, I'm not going to interrogate you on why it's animated or not, but if you're pitching animated shows, it should feel like it's a show that should be animated, I guess. And maybe it's doing something with that medium that we can only do in the cartoon world. Like maybe your characters have some, com some kind of interesting interiority that we can only sort of explore through weird dream sequences or things like this that are best achieved through animation. Or maybe the adventures that your characters get up to are so over the top and wacky, like in The Simpsons, where we have so maybe some episodes that could just be essentially an episode of Modern Family, and we have some episodes where Homer goes into space or whatever, right? The characters are just able to do wackier and crazier, more difficult, dangerous, expensive stuff in the animated medium than they'd be able to do otherwise. We have a question from Vincent Price. Are there any decent modern straight-up horror shows aside from American Horror Story? Why, yes, there are. Why don't you check out The Terror on AMC? Why, you could watch um, Marianne on Netflix. I really like that one. Um, what are some other horror shows we've liked? I've liked Gimbal del Toro horror shows like The Strain. Uh, I have really enjoyed... Oh, Courage the Cowardly Dog I'm going to list as a kid's horror show. And I'm going to put Goosebumps, too, just as kind of a nod to my ch childhood favorite show. Um, in chat, feel free to let us know what other horror shows are you guys enjoying nowadays. There's actually a lot of them on now. Um, it is a big thing these days. Here's a question from me. We use the term anesthetic in order to highlight the over-the-top nature of the characters be a suitable answer for something being animated? Yeah, I think so. Especially if it's something in the world of, you know... Um, comic books, superheroes, fantasy, that kind of stuff, it's pretty easy to justify. Here's some other questions in chat. Um, Vincent says, Courage and Goosebumps were integral in getting a nine-year-old me into horror. Yep, same. Um, Leopold asks, Never thought of explaining why something should be animated. If the answer is to show more expression that can't be shown in live action, is that an acceptable answer? To me, you can actually get like, I, I mean, the, every any answer is acceptable because you're not trying to pitch the shows to me. I'm not like a producer that's going to uh, like green light your show. So you don't actually have to run this by me. But I guess I'm ju I would just encourage you that if you want to be a TV writer that's working as creating animated shows, you will encounter this question uh, of why does this have to be animated? Those take a long time to make. They're very, very expensive and in work intensive and time consuming. And you should just have an answer. You don't have to run it by me, though. So in terms of genre, I think you should be able to identify what every what show, what genre every show here is quite easily when just one or two. I mean, Game of Thrones, fantasy, drama, Big Bang Theory, comedy, Walking Dead, horror, How I Met Your Mother, comedy, Supernatural. That's fantasy mystery thriller, basically, I think. Vampire Diaries, haven't watched it, so I'm not sure. Modern Family, comedy, Mentalist, crime procedural, Family Guy, comedy, Californication, dramedy, so drama slash comedy. Good Wife, I think it's legal drama. Simpsons, comedy, Mad Men, historical drama. So you should be able to do this quite easily for all these shows. And with your own as well, you should have a sense of what your genre is and what it means and what the fans are looking for, what things that your genre has to have in it. Does anyone have any questions about genre? Specifically, your maybe your own genre or something that you're curious about working in? Or what are the different expectations of different genres? I will say it's okay if you've never written this genre before. You can try something new, but you should at least be a fan of it. I would not write a genre you do not like.
Looks like we have a few folks typing in the chat, so I'll let them finish their questions and we'll move on. And I think we'll be sharing log lines. Here's a question. If your show has some lighthearted dark humor, but some specifically a comedy, does it still have to be classified as such? Like the boys, for instance. So um, you can clarify, you can clarify, that's what the comps are really good for clarifying the tone. So for instance, if I were to write out like a little uh, uh, description of the boys, it would be, um, what is it? I guess superhero is sort of its own blend of sci-fi fantasy, right? So we'd probably say superhero dark comedy. And then in the comps themselves, you could say it's a mix of this meets this. Uh, and those things might sort of better clarify the nuance of the tone that you're going for. Okay, if there's no more questions on genre, then we will, let's just go ahead and share log lines. So um, we don't have to talk story engines yet. We can get more into that next week, I think. So let's go ahead and, and um, post series or pilot log lines, and I will call on people to answer questions based on them and give you some ideas for revision. Let me just let you know that for next week, your goal is to simply revise the series and pilot log lines and also to read a professional pilot script ideally in the same genre that you are working in. It doesn't really have to be, but it sh probably should be. Um, and so by next week, you're going to try to have these log lines totally done. And uh, you will have read a pilot that you're ready to talk about and answer questions about. It's not trick questions, but just what did you read? What did you think of it? What happened in it? Stuff like that. We have a question, is it viable to have two opposing genres? Um, I would say, yeah, because there aren't really opposing genres. We, we've seen examples of pretty much anything that can be mixed together in some different ways. And it might even seem kind of intriguing that we see two genres together that we don't normally see. I mean, I think we'd all be fascinated to see what a, you know, po a political horror show would be like. My serial killer president show that I pitched earlier today. I don't think we've ever seen anything like that before. So somebody write that. Okay, um, so go ahead and post whatever you guys have got, and in the order that they come in, I will bring them up. We will start with Meep. Hello. Hello. All right, Punch Clock Heroes. Why don't you start us off with this one? Oh, do you want me to read it? Yep, go ahead. Sure. After finally becoming a superhero, the child of Detroit's most decorated superhero family must deal with managing her mother's expectations while trying to properly carve out her own career and develop her identity in um, in superhero society. That's the series logline. And then the pilot logline. After running into a high-level supervillain on her first day at work, Athena Summers, also known as Falcon Girl, must overcome the threat of the supervillain while still learning the rules and dealing with the pressures of being a superhero. All right, thanks for this. Um, and so let's also fill out the genre and um, format. So is this half hour or full hour? Half hour. Half hour, okay. And what genres would you say? You can- Science fiction. Okay, so sci-fi, we can count. Usually, yeah, sometimes people mash superhero together into including all kinds of stuff, but you can just say sci-fi if you want. And then um, is this um, sci-fi comedy or drama? Um, sci-fi- Or action adventure. Drama. Uh, action adventure. Okay. Action adventure. Got it. All right. So, 30 minute sci fi action adventure. And is it premise or status quo? Um. Oh boy. Can, remind me what those two things mean again when you say premise and status quo, just to make sure I know so which the, one's the correct. So, the continuity mm -hmm. format. So, is there. Are there long story arcs, or is every episode self contained? Oh, um, there, there are, uh, there are long, there are um, long story arcs. Okay, so premise. Sort of unusual to have a half-hour premise show, but we have seen examples of that, so it's uh, not unheard of nowadays. Okay, um, so let's go over the log lines. After finally becoming a superhero, the child of Detroit's most decorated superhero family must deal with managing her mother's expectations. So must manage her mother's expectations while trying to properly carve out her own career and develop her own identity in the superhero society. So you've said superhero three times in the logline. I would try to mm -hmm. avoid repeating words if you can. So, I mean, you could just okay. say super family. Um, 
something like this. Uh, and then the child of Detroit's most decorated. So I get the setting. We, this, this takes place in Detroit. I get the character. It's a teenager who's just come of age, probably, right? Uh, young adult, but yeah. So you say the child. How old is your main character? 22. Oh, okay. So that's slightly different than I expected, so you may want to clarify that. I mean, why does it take to your 22 to become a hero? Um, more so because there's still, like, there's still se there's still semblance of, like, training involved. Like, it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like you're sort of like a, a sidekick for a little while, and then you actually go out and do it on your own. Oh, that's, so that's it's cool. Yeah. Um, gra graduating from sidekick, I would maybe even include okay. that in the thing that kicks yeah, your okay. off. Yeah, okay. Something like that. And, and this is also interesting because I'm looking for something that makes this feel more specific. Because right now it just sounds like every superhero story I've ever heard. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas gr the idea that you have to start as a sidekick, that's kind of cool. I haven't really seen that before. The, it's almost like an internship. Right? Like she start she starts out she starts out like as a sidekick and she's like and she's like um done like a little bit of training but now the idea is that she's finally doing it as like a a superhero on her own and there's a lot of pressure that she has to deal with as a result of that. I see. Right. Okay. So um I would try to just make this feel a little more specific. Um, okay. Because you're saying things like must manage her mother's expectations while trying to prop, carve out her career and develop her identity in the superhero society. Um, if you can just make this feel like we haven't seen it before somehow, like if you can, um, like, cause th this just sounds like more of a description of the genre than it does a description of a specific, of a unique show in this world. Okay. So um, must manage her mother's, her mother is an alien. Her mother is the mayor. Like just, just tell us like why, what is unique about the setup here? Um, I guess I didn't, I guess ahead. I didn't know how to put it down, but it's like, like, um, I, I, the easiest way, I guess, to probably put it out would be like, um, her mother is like the, I guess, the the best hero, like the the number one hero, and I guess that was why I put decorate, uh, dec most decorated super family, mm -hmm. because the idea is that like her mother is supposed to be kind of like the pinnacle, and she is, you know, her kid, and because of that, and you know, having been a sidekick with such a massive like um shadow um looming over you and a parent who is also very um who is also who has very high expectations of you the idea is that she is basically coming into this world with all of that pressure on her back mm -hmm. but she still needs to find her own identity and be you know her own person and sort of like um step out of that shadow in a way i understand um i totally get it and it makes sense but it's like mm -hmm. this is invin like invincible has this exact same setup, and then it has a oh, huge hook me. on top of that. The hook. Oh, trust went... me, I just watched the show, yeah. and I and I, was, I I saw all the parallels right when I got to the end. I was like, oh man, I mm. <laughs> right. So and and I mean, what's the huge hook in Invincible? Oh, the dad figure is evil. Yeah. So that that to me is like what makes that story unique because even the setup of Invincible for the first half I was like okay I've seen this show before where is oh, the thing yeah yeah it's exactly how I felt and then you get to the very end it's like oh snap right literally exactly okay <laughs> so I would just I mean it may be that you have something like that and you have some really unique kind of approach twist something we haven't seen before that you can just express in the series logline. Um, mm -hmm. Or maybe you need to think of it more to think of how to clarify that, or or maybe you need to add something that just makes this feel like a unique, like the like you're not being graded on how unique this is. It's okay to write something that's more down the middle. I, this is just like for general skill development. <clears throat> if mm -hmm. there is something unique about the world, we want to know about it. And the idea of, for instance, you have to start as a sidekick, then you eventually can work up to becoming a hero. That grabbed my attention more than just the logline on its own. So if you can maybe mm. find something to wrap this around or something to really point at and say, oh, I know you've seen Invincible, but check this out. This one's different because blank. Mm. Then you'll, okay. you'll be in better shape. I, I'm not going to like stop you from writing it if it's not unique enough or whatever, but that's that's just my take on the series logline. line. Okay. All right, let's look at Pilot. So after running into a high-level supervillain on her first day at work, Athena Summers, a.k.a. Falcon Girl, must overcome the threat of the supervillain while still learning the rules and dealing with the pressures of being a superhero. So what pressures 
and what villain? We need to be more specific in the pilot logline. After running okay. it, after encountering a foot, uh, you know, a football jock that actually is a demon, you know, like tell us what, give us an example, like t- tell us what it is actually going to be, and then she has to defeat him while still making it on time to a date, or while still she still wants to mm. try out for the football team, but in order to get through the tryouts, she's going to have to fight this guy. See what I mean? So if you just mm. instead of saying dealing with the pressures of being a hero, give us one of those pressures. Instead of saying she encounters a villain, tell us which villain she encounters. Okay. Um, if I did have a villain and I wanted to sort of um, put them in there, what would like? I, I wouldn't have to like go super in depth on their powers, right? Just like um, an explanation of how they work. But yeah, just like a really quick. I just, like I just mentioned, a football jock who's also a demon is like as simple as it needs to be. Or you could say, you know, after she encounters a bank robber with tentacles, you know, just tell us, like, what is it? Like, what are we up against? What can we be excited uh, about watching your main character deal with? Okay. Um, uh, I guess, like, I don't know, a bank ro- Um, Let's see. If you're not sure yet, um, then it's okay. You don't have to no, have, have the answers. I, I, know what it, I know what it is. I just don't know how to describe it. Like, oh, she's, okay. a bank, she's, she's a bank robber whose body is basically made of, like, um a shape oh a bank robber whose body is made of a shape-shifting fabric a shape-shifting bank robber yeah there we go all right um okay and then yeah figure out so like we want to know what sorts of pressure she's dealing with i was giving you kind of like i was for some reason i was thinking she's in high school but at 22 you're not in high school so but so, let, go ahead i guess one of the things with like learning the rules it's something that happens in the story and it actually gets touched upon at the very beginning she is try. she um she is um she basically is given like a new piece of equipment which was something that she didn't um she didn't have access to or didn't work the same way back when she was a sidekick and it has like um a different it has a function that she's not fully used to following it, it's basically kind of like what gives her her orders and her commands and how she and how she's supposed to do things and she's not used to it yet she's not used to um basically she's not used to i guess being this being i guess not a sidekick being a full-on hero with like i guess more responsibility is the easiest way to go about it that's the closest i can get to it sure i understand um so yeah try to take an, take another swing at the log line with that greater sense of specificity so you'll both in the series and pilot and in the pilot you'll tell us what is the problem she encounters and what pressures is she dealing with so this sort of superhero show format is like they have a villain to deal with but also blank problem whether it's i need to do a date with mary jane or i need to you know um uh do a big presentation at work or i need to make it to theater auditions that'll tell us sort of the type of conflicts that she's going to be running into and as a 22 year old i'm like what kind of pressures is she dealing with okay okay got it all right any questions um, nothing that I can really think of at the moment. Just like be more specific about how she's um how she's going to attempt to defeat them, and be more specific about um the the things she's learning and what pressure she has to undergo. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, if it's if this part here, still learning the rules, is like too broad of a concept do i necessarily need to keep it there uh you could make it more specific while still while still learning how to fly you know what i mean like she's still learning how to do her laser blast whatever it is you can just zero down on it a little more if you want to okay just nothing too broad for the pilot logline you should err on the sense err on the side of specificity for the series logline you can err on the side of being a little bit more general but just we still want to know what the hook is even within that general description and what did you say I needed to work on with the series with the series logline? Just something that was a bit more, um, a bit more, I guess that 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 hooked in a bit more. If if there were anything, yeah. Again, more specific. So you need to find what makes this not just the same as every other superhero show about the superhero coming of age and needing to balance their real life responsibilities with fighting crime. That just sounds like a description of the genre. Whereas, got it. You maybe need to find what is the focus of this show. What is the perspective of the show? What sets it apart? Got it. Okay. I'll work on that. Great. Thank you for sharing. Hope that helps. Yeah, no problem. It does. Yeah. 
All right, we've got time. We got forty minutes. Um, who else has a log line they want to workshop? Verb, is this a log line? All right, let's get verb. Yeah, I thought I would I would try and write a log line. Uh, right now, the thing is a novel, but I would eventually like it adapted into a TV series. So, great. I thought I would write a line for it and see if I'm on the right direction. Okay, cool. Um, let's take a look. So, do you have a title, genre, and uh, time slot for this, or do you, have you made this choices um, for yet? Title: Children of Lilith or Demon Rising. Um, the um, the time slot would definitely be evening, any time after 8, I would think, because of the adult content. And then um, the genre is paranormal romance, trans slash paranormal thriller. So it's West Side Story meets um, Supernatural. Okay. And so I think I may have misspoken a little. When, when I say time slot, I guess I mean, is this half hour or is this full hour? A full hour, I would think, or or uh, I would, yeah, definitely think full hour. Sorry. You're good. Okay. So 60 minute paranormal romance. Got it. Okay, why don't you read the... And wait, so sorry, can you clarify, is this the series logline or the pilot logline? This would be the series logline. Series. Okay, go ahead and read it for us when you're ready. Sure. Um, I'm just going to pull it up on my computer here. Sabina is one quarter succubus. Alistair is half angel. They should be enemies. Together, they battle to get their families to accept not just their fledgling relationship, but must also convince them to work together. Only by using a combination of ancient technology and magic can they save the human race and possibly the entire world. So if they fail, all hell will break loose, quite literally. All right. Thank you for that. So I want to just make sure I understand, so I'm going to read through one more time. So Sabine is one quarter succubus. Alistair is half angel. So succubus, they're demons, right? Yes. Okay. They should be enemies. Together, they battle to get their families to accept their fledgling relationship, but also to convince them to work together. Against what, I guess, is my question. Okay. Yep. Good question. Yeah. So demons and angels have to collaborate against another threat? Yes, against, uh, against a faction of demons um, who are attempting to open the Seven Seals and release um, Hell on Earth. Okay. So only by using a combination of ancient technology and magic can they save the human race and possibly the entire world. It's kind of weird to put them in that order. To save the human race and possibly the world tells me that maybe they would save the human race but not the world, which I'm just wondering how that even makes sense. I guess, yeah, maybe it's a bit... Um, yeah, that makes... Like I said, it was just a quick jot, so... Yeah, no, no problem. It's, it's totally fine. I'll just, I just have to give feedback on what we have in front of us here. So, no, please. I, don't, I appreciate it. Sure, sure. So, should they fail, all hell will break loose. Okay, so I guess it's being a little coy when you say things like all hell will break loose when you should be just, again, more specific and tell us what actually will happen. So they're doing this okay. to stop, you said, a sort of evil demon faction from opening a portal to hell? Yes. Okay. And why do, you care, why do your characters care what happens to humanity? Or why do they care about Earth? Um, well... Sabine being three quarters human sees herself as being more human than demon and has people that she loves and cares about that she wouldn't want dead. And um, Alistair and his family all consider themselves protectors of humanity. It was part of the job they were left with when the last, when their father, who was one of the last angels left on earth, um, disappeared. It, it was left to him and his brothers to protect humanity. Okay, so it's angels' jobs to protect people normally. Yes. Okay, I understand that. Um, but do these characters live amongst humans, or do they live in heaven and hell? They live amongst humans. They do. Okay, so I, I would maybe include that in your series logline, um, because that okay. is a key point where, I mean, in some series, angels and demons walk among us all the time, and in some series, they can only stay in heaven and hell, right? So I think the we're trying to zero in on the hook of your show, and this is like an urban urban fantasy romance i get what you're what you're going for but let me ask who do you see as the sort of main character or is this a directly even split are you saying they're completely equally important or do we spend a little more time with one of them over the other we spend plenty more time with sabine than with alistair and and in the novel when we're 
Um, with the two of them together, it's from Sabine's point of view. If Alistair is separated from her, then it comes from his point of view. Okay, I see. Then in that case, Sabine, I would say, is the main character of this. It's, it sounds like we would describe that as the main yeah. protagonist of the show. There's two protagonists, and she's the, the more dominant of the two protagonists. Right, right, right. Okay. So, um, let's try the series logline again without names. So we're going to say when a, um, you know... A, and and maybe clarify what she actually does on Earth. Like she lives amongst humans, doing what? Is does she have a job? She's a tattoo artist. <laughs> okay, when a part demon tattoo artist. So do you see how we can explain it in a way that sounds evocative and interesting and doesn't rely on names because the the reader's not going to remember the names. Um, yeah. So we have to kind of illustrate what we're ta- we have to like show them what this world is rather than relying on them um, remembering these names. So, and you know, Alistair is an engineer, actually. That's what he does for a living. He's an engineer. Okay. So, he's an engineer, and he's, and he's a student of, of science. So he's currently studying uh, quantum mechanics in addition. But he's but he, his, the key skills that are important for this book is that he's been trained as an engineer. Okay. Falls for a... I don't know, know if this describes your show or whatever, but I'm just going to write something just so you can see a model of what this might look like. Um, mm mm-hmm. What, or we, maybe it could even be something like when a part when a part demon or when a half whatever half quarter demon tattoo artist discovers her new uh, flame is half angel, th- she must X right like so we have to find um can what is it uh, battle to get our families to accept their love and also uh, collaborate against this de- demonic threat that's going to destroy all of the world. So, so something like that, I think, is what you're saying will take years of the show to, do, to accomplish. Is that right? It should take the first season to accomplish the, the, the first... It should take the first season to get them to the point where they've managed to close the first two seals, and now everyone is looking for the last of them in the next book. Okay. Uh, but they're also looking for the missing father as well, which which is what comes into play... In season two, it would be the search for the missing father as well as the search for the the seals because the father's been missing for 150 years. The angel father, that is. Okay. Not so, her. So She um, knows where her father is. He's running a sex cult in New Mexico. Okay. Because he's in... So we can't include every subplot in the log lines and you have yeah, to be a little... A little... Obviously, no. I'm just saying, like, like I, the first season ends with the closing of the first two... Um, seals and the death of the arch devil mahaziel i see okay so yeah. um i would yeah rephrase it a little more like this to ground us in the main character first so whatever part half mm-hmm. demon tattoo artist f- find that sort of thing that happens so she discovers her new whatever is half angel then they have to you can use most of what else the rest that you've done here already so they have to get their families to accept their love and also convince them to work together against a larger demonic threat something like that would be the series logline and then the pilot logline, you'll find just what happens in the very first episode. You know, when the guy comes in for a tattoo, she discovers, holy crap, he's an angel. And then their first date is, or maybe the first episode is like, has their first date in it or something like that. Or I don't know exactly what it would be, but you can just make the scope much smaller for the pilot logline and just tell us what is specifically the very first chapter of this. Very first, very first, um, well, not the very first chapter, the... I would assume that the pilot would end up being a, a condensation of, say, the first five chapters of the book. So yeah. it would be, um, you know, um, a, a part demon tattoo artist, you know, um, suffers a series of mysterious nosebleeds. Meanwhile, uh, a faction of demons attempting to open a portal to hell are busy with their plans. And basically the, the cold open would be kind of a Buffy thing where you see the demons, except my demons are not, you know, the sort of chanty kind of demons. They're, they're all dressed as politicians, and the whole thing looks like um, some kind of political meeting initially before the attempt for the open of the portal. And um, for the most of the thing, until they accidentally release the wrong um, devil onto Earth, um, the main bad guy is actually a sort of a middle management guy who's doing his job and trying to get this thing done and trying to get a promotion and um so yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to make this more succinct because i, I haven't thought this out about how i would word the pilot but it would probably run up until um the point where he makes the appointment to make the tattoo on the first date uh with her the pilot so only, wait the pilot only with, comes 
the the pilot ends as they meet? Uh, no, no, no. They they meet several times. They meet um, the first time that they meet. He, they, he meets her as she's having one of these horrible nosebleeds, which are which what one of the things the first scene of the cold open. You see that them attempting to open the sealed bales, and it's causing horrible nosebleeds amongst everybody in the room. And then what you find out later is that it it's. Um, that that the nosebleeds are are more that they're affecting demons all over a certain within a certain radius, and they actually follow the nosebleeds by time because it goes out like a ripple. So they follow those um, as one of the ways that they they locate what's going on. Okay. But um, she basically she basically turns up to do a tattoo convention and visit you know family, and ends up going her her uncle. And finds out that he's had nosebleeds at the exact same time as she has. And that just seems very weird to them. But because they're magically connected, they don't realize it's other demons. And then she gets to the tattoo convention, runs into two more demons who've also had nosebleeds. And then in the meantime, she's also run into Alistair twice um, before the convention. So in the first episode, we probably have the, the meet cute with Alistair on the train. We would probably have, you know, the bits about the bad guys and the nosebleeds. Um, we would have a small portion where you see Alistair and his family, and 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 their plot line because they have a they have a plot line that involves a piece of ancient technology that spontaneously turns on that belongs to their angel father. And then the final ending for that would probably be him making an appointment after he saves her from getting mugged um, to make an appointment to actually get tattooed by her. And that would probably end the, the pilot. Okay. So we'll get much more into structure in the coming weeks. Um, it sounds like you have a good sense of what is happening in the plot. So I think that um, the challenge will be trying to distill down just the basics into these log lines um, and trying to finish these off by the end of our next class meeting. But it sounds like you have what yeah. you need. Any other questions on this? No, no. I was just, I was just looking for your input because I am, I am, I can write a novel, but I have no idea about screenwriting, so thank you for your help. Sure, of course. Thanks for being here. All right. I think it looks like we have one more in the chat from Vincent Price, or his inferior twin, perhaps. Action horror. Love to see it. Oh, uh, hold Can you hear me? Hey, we hear you. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Just want to make sure. Um, why don't you start out by reading off what you have? Oh boy. Okay. Um, name Antambra. That is a, the name of a physical phenomenon. But for now, let's just say it's a name that sounds cool. Uh, Thirty-minute runs uh, runtime. It's serialized. The genre would preferably be action horror. I have not seen enough, you, you know, com combinations of those two things. So I figure there's a market there. Mm -hmm. Uh, comps in terms of shows, Asterisk is the Evil Dead, kind of sort of the feel that I'm going for, maybe a little bit less comedy. Uh, Cabin in the Woods, just for, for the general premise, and The Suicide Squad, I know, again, not a show movie, but I think would work really well in serialized format and also directly relevant to the premise. Mm -hmm. uh, series logline, and I tend to get really, really wordy with my stuff, so just let me know if that's ever a problem. Uh, a clandestine strike team of expendable supernatural convicts fights to keep humanity ignorant of the paranormal world or miserably die trying. A uh, bit of a mouthful, I'm sure, so I'm happy to simplify it as much as possible. Uh, no, actually, this is not too, it's not too crazy wordy. It actually seems to work pretty well. A clandestine strike <laughs> team of expendable supernatural convicts fights to keep humanity ignorant of the paranormal world. Or miserably die trying. I have a couple questions based on this, but let's go through the pilot logline first, and then I'll ask my questions after I hear that. Yes. Uh, so, pilot. Set loose by a botched doomsday ritual, an eldritch god massacres the paranormal experts, keeping it at bay. The eccentric new director of a fledgling containment agency assembles a task force of captive monsters da -da, to keep the fugitive deity to bring the fugitive deity down, lest the paranormal world is exposed. Okay. Um. I think I get it. I mean, uh, this is like our kind of Hellboy, Men in Black kind of genre. Um, yes, but a lot more monster centric, basically. Right, right. Um, so, but it doesn't seem like the stakes that you've outlined in the series logline are the same that you've outlined in the pilot logline. 
where you say in the series logline, they're, tr- they're fighting to keep humanity ignorant of the paranormal world. But in the pilot logline, mm-hmm. they're trying to stop an eldritch god from massacring people, which is much, a, it's like way more important than just keeping humanity ignorant. Like it's, mm-hmm. if, if their jobs are mostly going to be, it, it seems like keeping humanity ignorant of that is almost a side effect of them stopping the evil god, no? That is true, yes. I just, I feel like, you know, stop this thing from like ending the world or doing something spooky that sounds a bit generic. So I figure a part of that is, you know, everybody's kind of trying to keep humanity ignorant of the fact that there's, like, all this supernatural shit happening constantly and that there's constantly threatened by something supernatural, if that makes sense. I'm with you. It just seems sort of strange to say, lest the paranormal world be exposed, oh, by the eldritch god that's killing everyone. It's like, our main concern seems to be misplaced if that's, if we're like, oh no, the eldritch god got out, now people know about eldritch gods. We're not like, oh no, the eldritch god got out, now it's massacring the entire mm-hmm. world, right? So, um, That's fair. I, I guess just maybe uh, fig- I, figure out what is the primary objective that your characters have. Is it defending the world from threats, or is it keeping the the organization a secret? Uh, both, preferably. Uh, but obviously, the bigger one being preventing things from like the idea is like it's a balance of both. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you know you have to take the immoral route. You have to like do some sh- do shady shit. You have to like keep certain whistleblowers down in order to keep humanity ignorant, so that's like a second objective. But the main one, obviously, being that, you know, all this scary, horrible, supernatural shit that's constantly happening doesn't, you know, spread into actual polite society, if you will. Yeah, I, I mean, that, why, why why, do we want to not have anyone find out about it? To protect them, right? Right, moral, moral panic. Uh, I'm sorry, to prevent a panic, to prevent anarchy, to prevent, yes. So the primary goal is to protect people? Yes. Okay. But I still want to keep, you know, the secrecy element, because otherwise it becomes too superhero if you will like otherwise the moral conflict is too easily preserved if it's just stop the bad guy then obviously everyone's on board but if it's stop the bad guy but also keep you know the public at large finding from finding out about the bad guy whatever the cost even if it means you know again killing whistleblowers doing some doing like immoral shit doing, like keeping certain things like contained or even exterminated i'm with you I, that's i feel like that's a, there's a bit more tension there if that makes sense yeah 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 we're doing kind of men in black kind of stuff I'm, i get it um so is the main character the director of the agency? Uh, they are the most prevalent one. Mm. I'd say they're the character that kind of goes through the ghost the like last throughout the majority of the show. But then initially, yes, in the, in the pilot episode, they are the main character. They are the one we are following. Okay, and no. it kind of shifts to the task force itself gradually. But so a member of the task force does not take the center of the narrative it's mostly about the person that coordinates the task force full of supernatural people uh so if i i don't know if i'm going to sound a little too ambitious here uh, i brought up suicide squad precisely because i don't know if you've seen either of the movies one of them was pretty good um i like the idea that this really is like an expendable unit and if somebody on it you know gets killed then they just find some other convict that can take up the mantle uh, I like the idea of like not really initially having a clear main character aside from this director, so that you're not sure exactly who's going to survive and who's not, right? So there's not like, really a character with like plot armor. Yeah, you can do that. I, I guess I'm just asking to clarify. And in, in most shows like this, our main character would be a member of the team. You don't have to do that if if you're saying oh, my main yes. character. Oh yes, no, is the I, I absolutely. I, I'd fine. say like the initial focus is on the director, but then it quickly shifts onto one or two specific members of the team who are kind of here for the long haul. Okay, uh, so I guess I would ask mm-hmm. yourself who is the just yeah maybe. It, it seems like if if the if the your lead is the director of this agency, that's fine. Um, you can frame mm-hmm. it around that, and you have already um, framed the pilot logline around that person. Um, if there if the focus does later shift and this ends up being someone else's story, then you just want to let us know about that in the pilot logline. T- tell us who this is actually going to be about. Um, but it's fine to have this mm-hmm. director be at the center stage. Okay. Um, and then we need one rich one. Sorry, I said run ritual <laughs> because I was looking at the word ritual. We need one sentence if you can. So try to get one single sentence for the pilot logline. I think you can do it. And then um, I totally get the stakes and the problem and the tactic that we're going to use to address the problem. So I think you're in pretty good shape. I mean, the they're, these are pretty well phrased. Just try to simplify pilot logline, condense it down a little bit, and... Um, look at those stakes that i mentioned before so if the importance is on defending humanity frame that as the most important thing and their their side objective is to keep it all a secret um absolutely just my concern is do you think that you know the whole keeping humanity safe is a bit too generic 
Well, isn't that what like, I, 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 I don't want to make it a super, you know, I don't want to make it a necessarily superhero show just with a bit more supernatural, right? Um, but, but isn't that what your characters are doing? I mean, so are you asking what's a different choice I could make that would make this more unique? I guess so. Like, I, I think, yes, yes. Well, how can I make this sound more unique than just saving the world? Well, if our focus, it depends on which point of view you want to really take and who we're really following. Um, if, you, if, for instance, we had one of our main characters was essentially bound in, like, they're trapped, they're ha they have to do this, right? They're convicts, or they're, like, yeah. prisoners, aren't they? Absolutely. So if yes. your main character's goal is essentially, I'm just trying to escape from this, and I'm being forced to save the world again and again and again, that, to me, is kind of fun. Mm. I mean... Uh, that is definitely an important aspect of it, yes. So maybe you could find that uniqueness there, in, in the sense that the characters don't want to be doing this, or maybe even they wish they could be on the team that's threatening the world. Maybe they're they're worshippers of the Elder God or whatever. Maybe there's some conflict within the team itself. I mean, you have inherent tension in the fact that your characters are prisoners. That is what mm -hmm. separates this from a lot of other superhero teams is that they are forced to be here. So I would try to maybe figure out how that changes their normal objectives. Or maybe the sh if the show is not really about saving the world, it's more about how do I defeat this organization that's keeping me and my friends captive. Maybe that is kind of an angle you, you could take on it. Um, I, I'd I like that to be like there. a conflict of interest. Like the, the the main qualm that the characters kind of face episode to episode is like one: can I find a way to like escape? Is it more important to save the world, like to keep humanity ignorant of all this shit that's happening, or to escape and you know maybe get back to freedom? And the other one being like: is it even worth doing what I'm doing? Like I I, I myself am a monster, right? Mm -hmm. I will never be like properly accepted by society. Is it even worth it, or should we just keep doing it because it's just the right thing to do? Right. Are they obvious monsters? Like, you look at them and you can tell they're monsters right away, like Hellboy mm -hmm. and Abe and stuff like that, or are they more just, like, people with magic powers? Well, uh, well, in terms of appearance and defense, some of them can definitely pass for human, but as far as the designs themselves go, absolute monsters. Just straight out of a horror movie, just horrific, deformed. Again, some of them maybe resemble humans. It's It shifts a bit in terms of, like, how they originated, but mm -hmm. monsters. Absolutely monsters. I see. Okay, so they could never join polite society because they look like Leatherface. Um, I think I... Well, yeah, at least not in any meaningful way, yeah. Or maybe, you know, you take somebody like Carrie, who, you know, is a normal person. I'm just using a real character here. Mm -hmm. uh, who's a normal person, but, you know, has this, like, supernatural aspect to her that obviously makes her very uh, very volatile if she were ever to be in real society. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, so you've got some interesting tension and conflict amidst the team. I mean, the fact that they're expendable, the fact that they're prisoners, I'm sure there's something in there that can you can bring to the forefront to make this feel a little different from just we're protecting the world episode by episode. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Sure, thanks for sharing. Looks like we have, do we have one more? And I think we have time for one more. Did, did I miss one? Who posted theirs? Um, I can't see the whole username for some reason. I'm just seeing B dot dot dot. Maybe it's Bugs Bunny. I'll invite you to the stage. All right, hello. Can you hear us okay, Bugs Bunny? She said, I can't talk right now, can I write? Oh, sure, go ahead. So I'll just start by reading out what you have. If you want to clarify your intentions or ask specific questions, then you can feel free to do so in the chat. Um, but uh, so I'll give you a minute to do that while I just read out what we have. Okay, so I don't see a title or genre here, but I'll just read the log lines and try to figure out what you mean. After being swarmed by waves of thieves at the edge of bankruptcy, a pushover tavern owner has to ask his crush a regular customer and the most feared female mercenary to teach him how to defend his business. Okay, that sounds more like a scene than a description of a series. Um, but I do, I can kind of extrapolate what you mean a little bit. So you're saying something like, at the edge of bankruptcy, a, taver a tavern owner who's sick of thieves hires a mercenary to train him to defend his business. And then you're sort of, I guess, saying that this show is about their partnership and she is going to sort of become his bouncer or like head of security or something like that. You can feel free to correct me if I have that 
anywhere near right in the chat if you want to. Um, but uh, if you if you frame the series logline as he asks someone to do something, that sounds like just one moment. Whereas I think we want to frame it a little bit more like he partners with a female mercenary to keep his business safe against waves of thieves. Okay, something like that. So try not to make the series logline sound like just one single simple incident. It has to sound like this will be years of entertainment that we get from this sentence. Okay, um, let me look at the pilot logline. After inheriting his parents' tavern, why is single, singular parent? Do you mean both parents? Tavern, the main character, not the main character, you just say uh, a bar, bar, in, an innkeeper. Struggle, right, and you would probably give us an adjective here. I think you gave us one before. A, maybe like a, f whoops. If he's bankrupt and he's at the edge of his rope, maybe we can say a frazzled innkeeper. I don't know, whatever you want. Um, struggles to keep his business afloat, thanks to thieves. After the third robbery, one of the customers, a very feared female mercenary, defends him. He wants to ask her to be his trainer. The problem is that's his crush. Okay. Genres, romance, action, drama, fantasy, medieval. Okay, so let's just pick uh, two genres at most. This sounds like fantasy romance is fine. Okay, so let's um, try to narrow this down to... Uh, it sounds like you have a couple different inciting incidents here, or you framed a couple different things as the inciting incidents, so you probably want to rethink the start of this a little bit like this. So, after inheriting his parents' tavern, uh, maybe even frame it like struggling to keep his newly inherited tavern afloat. Uh, Frazzled Innkeeper must convince his crush, a feared mercenary, to step up and defend him. Something like that. Um, that may not be exactly how you see it, but try to just simplify, condense down to this one sentence that just tells us in order. Um, the, the events should be in order. It shouldn't be out of order. It comes up as a little out of order when you say, after inheriting his parents' tavern, the innkeeper struggles to get, keep his business afloat thanks to thieves. Whereas it, the order of events should have been like, he inherits the tavern, then the thieves become a problem, then he struggles to keep the business afloat. So just the order that you've given it to us here is a little confusing, but try something a little like this. You can even move us forward a little bit and say something, start us off by saying, his normal world, his status quo is struggling to keep his newly inherited tavern afloat. Then say the innkeeper must blank. He must rely on his crush. He must uh, you know, find a way to convince his crush, whatever it is to defend him to uh, protect the business. Okay, something like that. I hope that that is clear. It looks like you've requested to speak, so I'll see if you can try again. Are you able to unmute? Uh, hello? Hello. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't talk in the moment. That's okay. Um, do, does this help? Um, did you have any questions based on the feedback I gave here? Yeah, I think the... Um... My my um, my problem with like repricing is um so my intention with the show is to like have them like training together, get to know each other for like multiple months in a row, like different instances, of, like a lot of clashing with both of their personalities, especially because um so like uh the main character is like very very shy, very like a pushover, like um has issues standing his ground. Uh, that's why he's losing his tavern. It's like the typical, uh, it's just an example. It's like this tavern on Western, on like uh, West movies that the Wild West movies were like, it's always getting robbed constantly. It's like in, in, the, in the middle of like a, a road, like a past, past survives road. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have any way of protecting it. Um, <clears throat> due to the constant um attack of it like he's going into bankruptcy um 
So I also um I would like to have them like overcome different uh, ways of themes, not just ones. Like it goes from like just general themes to like organized crime, like big organized crimes that that like they just terrorize people. I so uh, yeah, that's more or less the the plot. Got it. Okay. So, um, yeah, try to just reduce the words in both your log lines a little bit. You can, you can, um, specify or add a little more nuance that I, I mean, obviously I've reduced this down in a pretty simple way. You can just use this as a starting point, try to find that spe the specifics of what the show is and, um, add those in. I think it sounds like, uh, the, if the series log line is she's going to be, is she training him how to fight? Is that right? Yeah. She is. Okay. So training him how to fight to defend his business, I get that. I then, I guess then for the pilot logline, try to figure out what is the very first conflict. Um, if I would think that him just working up to asking her is not going to be the basis of the whole pilot episode, right? Yeah, it's more like just uh, laying the the ground of like just the. Uh... Like of course, I inherit the inherent of the talent, uh, showcasing like how uh, he's struggling with like the different the different like levels of uh, thieves or organized crime that he has to face on a daily basis, and then yeah, it's somewhere along the lines of like he uh, is more of like a very introverted person, like very uh scary cat. Um, trying to like come up with a way to convince somebody who is very straightforward, very intimidating, very uh, scary. Um, to like work with her is gonna be like this, like a thing where like um, she like she first rejects him, like says no, um, and he, and and it's like like coming up with a way of like convincing her, maybe with money, maybe with like I don't know, a three a year of like free food mm -hmm. <laughs> or free beer. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, and it's like um, the mercenary pointing out why it's not going to work so, uh, somewhere along the lines, yeah. Sure. No, I get it. I, I see the show. I, I think it's a good idea. Um, and uh, your pilot logline might just need to express just the, what is this first threat. So we may say something like, mm -hmm. you know, he's trying to keep the tavern afloat. The innkeeper has to convince this mercenary mm -hmm. to teach him to fight before a gang burns his place down. Or he's been threatened by this one specific villain. So we just might want to say, what happens if he fails, right? Yeah, so basically you'll have to, to close. Um, he's already having like a hard time getting like new customers because of the swarm of like the uh, uh, thieves. Mm -hmm. He's obviously losing a lot of money for being robbed all the time, not just from money, but also supplies. Mm -hmm. And he's just having a hard time just making these like a road spots where a lot of people can like, like, um, to, like pass by uh because it has been like since since her parent since his parents left or like died i don't know um i'm still working that up uh they were like the ones who kept the area safe and now they are gone mm -hmm. and now it's his job but he can't i see yeah i'm with you i totally get it um so yeah just just simplify the log lines a little bit i think you'll be in good shape maybe give us that sense of, in the pilot, what will happen if he fails, like, what is this very first threat mm. that he's facing, or the initial villain, if there's, like, one central bad guy that becomes the first problem, tell us who that is. Thank you. That's Thank very you. helpful. Thanks so much for sharing. I think this show sounds cool. I would definitely watch this. All right, we're at the end of our time. I want to just open to any and all questions for next week. Let me remind you what the intention is that for next time you will be revising the series and pilot log lines based on the feedback you got today and you will be trying to finalize those by the end of next class so you can get more you can revise them and then get another round of feedback next week if you want but try to have it done by the end of next class additionally you have to read a full professional pilot from beginning to end and be ready to talk about it um and you, there's it's not a quiz it's not a trap you just need to say what did you read what did you like what did you learn a link uh, website in the chat where you can find lots of pilots to read. Any and all questions remaining in our last five minutes?
Vincent Price asks, what pilot episodes do you know that are set in a world with specific rules or fiction, not just our world, that set it up well? I would read Pushing Daisies by Brian Fuller, um, which is in a very stylized, cartoonish version of Earth with people that have magic powers and stuff like that. The main character can bring people back to life temporarily, and the rules are really, really, really well explained with specific examples and although it's kind of a complicated setup, um, the pilot just makes it feel like a breeze and in just 60 pages does such an elegant dance that by the end, you're, it's just it almost feels as satisfying as an entire movie does on its own. So that's my big recommendation there. One of my favorite pilots. Easy to find that one online. Thank you, Vincent Price. Let me ask, what other questions do we have? We also have this upcoming class in Adapting Myths, Stories, and Fairy Tales that will be today at 5. A lot of people seem to be interested in this one, so we hope to see you guys for that. That's 5 Pacific time. If there's no more questions, we will wrap up for today in pilot class. And by next week, you'll have read a complete pilot all the way through, improved your logline for series and uh, pilot, and um, filled out your sketchbook as much as you can with as many pieces of influence or inspiration, ideas for scenes and characters, and what's going to happen in the story. You're going to try to be writing down um, ideas for events, set pieces, including pictures and links and research materials and anything else that you need, all of it goes in the sketchbook. So fill that out as much as you can by next time. You don't have to turn it in, but just like be always working on that. We have a poll in the chat, thank you Nacho, which says if you're planning on joining one of these upcoming boot camps, you can click on one of these numbers. Um, or if you have additional questions, then you can click a little number button there too and we'll help you out. We hope to see you guys soon and make sure to sign up if you wanna be in the rest of this boot camp, scriptcamp.net. New lower prices, unlimited classes from just $19 a month if you buy yearly. Over 100 hours of classes, events, and workshops every month. If you refer a friend, you will get a month free. And so will they. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you, guys. We hope to see you back next week for more pilot writing. We'll see you at your next script camp class or event. Have a great day.